Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be revisiting the twisted part and showing you some different workflows of creating that. This has come up due to the Hackaday article and within there there's been a number of comments regarding how slow the workflow was, also quite a few comments regarding FreeCAD itself. So what I'd like to do is show you some different workflows, how much quicker they are and also remembering that this is a tutorial, it's not a speed run. And thank you to Donald Papp for actually mentioning me and showing how FreeCAD can create geometry such as this, just as good as any other CAD package. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So we're going to look at another way of making that twisted part. I'm going to first come over to the sketcher. I'm not going to use any reference material. I'm just moving through this quickly. So new sketch along the X, Y plane. We can create a circle in here and also an arc. Let's create an arc there. Hit escape and we'll take these two and make them concentric or quincy constraint. The version that I'm using help about is version 0.21 and this is on the 3rd of the 5th 2023. So it's one of the weekly builds. So we've got that there. Let's use a polyline. The coincidence constraint will automatically come on. If we look in our settings, we've got the auto constraints on. So this has changed here. It used to be in here. And we can come in and create the other part of the geometry. Escape. I haven't got any horizontal constraints on there. And I didn't make the post to coincident. There we go. So we've got those. So we've got this part. And let's close that. What I'm going to do now is come over to the part workbench and I'm going to use this to make a face. So click on it, part, come down to make face from wires. So we've got that there. Let's come over to the draft workbench. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that face and create a clone. And that's under modifications, clone. And we've got that face there, which I can right click and transform and bring around to this side. And we'll bring this across somewhere over here. Now we've got that, and we'll let's come over to the surface workbench. You can move these tools to one workbench if you wanted to. We don't have to keep on jumping back and forth through each of the workbenches. It saves us some time if we moved it by the customization of the toolbars. So we take the edges, control select that, and create a blend curve, and do the same on this side. Control select that, and create the blend curve. Now, if we look, that's high, that sketch bar present the space bar, and that face, we can see that this blend curve, it starts too far back. So this is all to do with the start parameter. So this is the first edge. The start edge is from zero to one. So type in there one for the start parameter. It places it at that end. Let's check the other side, click on the face, press the space bar. We've got the same on this side. That blend curve. And we'll look down for the start edge is fine. The end edge and parameter that needs to be one as well. Let's just pull back zero one end, one the other, all the rest in the middle, 0 0.5 halfway. So we've got the two edges now and the face. I'm gonna click on the face and right click transform and bring this around slightly. So I'm gonna to start to create that curvature. This allows me to take both of these, these blend curves and add the start size. So this will be the start size of that curve. And hit free and what you'll see is these will start and the end size is free these will start to come outwards so you can see 
that they're starting to start this way this one is starting to come out this way so i've got to reverse that start size so you can see it's come in and circled inwards so click on it come down to the start size minus three and it goes the other way so the start and the end if i click this one first then control click this side added the blend curve this is start this is the end simple as that so we've got that there let's come around to the other side we've got the same on this one so this is the end because i selected that one last end size minus three so we can control the continuity across those so i've got those there let's come over to the part workbench and take these two and create a ruled surface across those so we're creating a face via a ruled surface i now can take the one that I started to twist, decide on the angle that I want. So we can either enter angle or right click transform and bring this round further. And hit OK. If we have some problem like this, then this is to do with the orientation of the ruled surface. We can come in here and set this to say forward and that will fix that. Now we've got three individual parts. We've got two faces and one twist. We need to take these faces and create some depth. So we can use the offset, the 3D offset. Watch out for the normals. We could join these all together. So let's offset this by say two and fill the offset. And if I click on this one, and you can see the normal is this way. It's going this way. So if I fill that offset, and if we joined those together and then did it, well, then we will be a bit all over the place. So I'm going to set this to minus two, just because the normal's the other way. And okay that, and finally this one, and offset that one. This one's got to be minus two as well. We have a fill offset, okay. And finally, we can take these, control select them. And well, if we control select them, we're going to control select the internal of these. So these are not hidden at the moment. Let's just control select the offsets and then use that. First of all, take the face, the ruled surface, and the other face, press the space bar just to hide those. Control select the offsets and then create the fusion. And we've got our finished part. So this workflow I'm going to do now is going to basically take from the previous video and mix in this video's workflow. So we're looking at a hybrid between those two. So in the previous workflow, we create the sketch and then we create another sketch. Go along the X, Y plane. And this one was just to place the distance between the center points. So the points between these circles. And we add a constraint in here. This won't be used for sketching. It's just used for placement. And we'll set this to say 80. So we've got that one in there. I'm gonna name that as well as distance between. This means that when I take this sketch and extrude it, let's come back over to the part workbench and use the extrude. I'm gonna use extrude symmetrical. So you're using symmetry in there. And we'll set this to say three. We've got symmetry across there. I can take the extrude over in the draft workbench. Now I would move this clone tool over into the workbench that you use the most, something like the part or part design. I use this a lot. So we can move those tools into the workbenches. Modifications, clone after selecting the extrude, we get the extrude clone there i'm going to select that extrude and i'm going to use the map mode let's click on that map mode make sure that's saying selecting and select the vertex so come in select that vertex that's moved that across there and hit ok we want to rotate this now we can either go to the clone and right click transform and rotate that around or we could click on the clone and use the scaling and set all these to a minus minus one you may get an error 
but as we move through I've got the notifications on which I normally have off so this will flip it around the other way so we've got that one there this means that I can take this line whenever I want come into the constraints along the side I've got the distance between and I can set this to say 60 and set the distance between those I'm going to add that clone slight bit of rotation so we'll rotate around this way just so we can demonstrate the next part over in the surface workbench so we need two edges like before but I'm only going to take this edge and this one make the blend curve and also these two that's all I need just those two edges take the top and we've got to sort out the position of this blend curve as before it's in the wrong position so the start the one we start with this side start parameter 0.5 we'll place it in the middle one we'll place it either at one end or the other so it's placed at this end this side if i click on the extrude press the spacebar and it all looks okay we're just toggling the visibility this side this is the end second one i selected and we look at the end parameter so that's one pull it in there and this side is all right press space i'll just have a look at that take both of these now and set the start size set both of those to three across the board and we can inspect that and have a good look to see what's happening. Pressing the spacebar and then examining those. So this side looks good, but the other side is no good. So we've got a problem with this side. So the start one, we'll set that to minus to make a curve the other way. Do we need it this side? We can see it poking out this side. So we need to set the end as well. So we come down end size minus three now we've got that we just need to use the part and make a ruled surface select one plane curve control select the other and create the ruled surface ruled surface is created we can create the offset let's reposition ourselves the offset is going the right way so one millimeter and we need this as three millimeters Fill the offset. Okay, so we've got a filled offset across those. We've got the continuity right, and now we need to add the twist. We just twist this extrude a bit more. Right click, transform. I actually quite prefer this way because let's rotate that around that way. Nothing's hidden on the left hand side here. Notice we've got an error. And this is because the ruled surface, we need to come in and look at the orientation, this orientation here. So make sure that's set to either forward or reverse, depending on which one works for you. And we have the twist in there. And then it's just a case of selecting all the solids, the extrude, both those extrude and the offset, and creating a union. Obviously, if we come in, we saw that inside the offset, ruled surface was still visible press the spacebar that's now invisible and we've got that twist in there not only that we can come back to our sketch and set the constraint to whatever we want that pulls it out that way so there's another workflow for you i hope that's given you a couple more options with the twisted part and i hope that's answered some of the comments that's been placed in the article on hackaday Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you again soon. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content, and that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel.
Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.